Okay. Claire Bear. Okay, here we go. We're live on Facebook. You are live, ladies, FYI. Um, hello, viewers, tuner inners, watchers, joiners, members. Um, welcome to our Stepmom Story alumni panel. If you are wondering what the heck is an alumni panel, these four beautiful women that you see sitting in front of you are members of the program I talk about all of the time called Your Stepmom Story. And Your Stepmom Story is the program I am so proud to facilitate where women like this join in hopes of finding their happily ever after. And some of them, like these women, just happen to find it. So today, what we're going to be do is, is um, opening up for some questions. Okay, so each of these ladies is going to go ahead and introduce herself, uh, let you know, you know, where was she just a few short months ago for some, um, you know, what brought them to the uplifted challenge and then into the stepmom story after that, you know, what were the things that, that they struggled with, the things that really were getting in the way of their happiness way back when, and what is life like now that they have joined the step on story now that mindfulness is really a pillar of how they live their lives. Um, I think you're going to be really amazed at the strength and the hope and the amazingness that these women have to share with you. I'm so honored to be like gathering here with them because they're just the best, the best. I love this group so much. I love our sisterhood so much. And you know, there, I think we've all been in a place in our stepmom journey where we felt like totally hopeless, you know, like we've all had that bathroom floor moment, that crying, dying in the bathtub moment where we're like, I don't know how much longer I can do this for, you know, maybe I'm not cut out for stepmoming. I've tried everything. I've done it all. There's no hope. And I know each of the people on this, on this call have been in a place where they're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. You know, like, this is so hard. I can't keep going on the way that I'm doing this. And now they're here to inspire you and tell you how they did it. So each of the girls, women, ladies are going to go through and share their stories with you. So if you're watching, um, go ahead and say hi for me. Hi, Nikki. Nikki's here. Hi, Nikki. If you're watching live, go ahead and say hello. Let me know where you are tuning in from. Uh, and then I'll get the ladies to go around and share a bit about their stories. And if at any time they're talking about something that brings up a question for you and you want to know more about that, all you've got to do is type your questions in this comment box. Okay. And then when everyone's done sharing their stories, I'm going to relay the questions to everybody and they will have an opportunity to answer those questions for you. Okay. Um, hi, Francesca. Sup from Texas, Julia. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amy. Hi, Eileen. Hello from Philadelphia. Trail BC. Nice. Another Canadian. Hi, Alexis from Eau Claire. We're so glad to have you all here. Um, thanks for spending your afternoon with us. We are so happy to see you. So, Lindsay, why don't you um, why don't you go ahead? Just because you're kind of an OG stepmom story member, you were one of the you were a part of the stepmom story before it was even called the stepmom story. I think you think it was you were one of the first people that helped build it, helped test it, helped make it an idea that now we have. 50 women and lots of continents who are a part of it. So, um, Lindsay, you can go ahead and open up your microphone, share us, share some, some of your story with us. Some people have probably saw on the um, case study page. Some people are probably a little bit familiar with your story, but let's hear it from your mouth. You know, where, where were you just a couple of years ago when you stumbled across 
step queen? What were the things that you struggled with? Um, what did you learn and what's life for you like for you now that you have been a part of the sound story for a couple of years now? Okay. Can every, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name's Lindsay and I'm from Alberta, Canada. Um, I'm a divorced mother myself. So I have two bio kids with my ex-husband. Um, I've been with my fiance, Jason, now for over six years. Um, and he has two sons from his first marriage. Um, so I have four boys in total. Um, we've been living together for about four and a half years now. Um, we should have been married this year. Blovid has stopped that twice because um, we're getting married in Maui. So fingers crossed next July is a go. Um, when it comes to the kids, we both have 50-50 custody of our children. Uh, mine are on a two-week rotation and his are on a one-week rotation. So our life looks like there's a week where we have just his kids, a week where we have just my kids, a week where we have all four, and then we have a kid-free week every month. Obviously, that can fluctuate if things come up and whatnot, but that's pretty much the standard. Um, I've been working with Brittany now for almost two years, um, and it's been amazing. So um, I have a lot of trauma and a lot of history in my life, um, and some of the themes and stories that have kind of I've carried with me through life are that everyone leaves me, um, I'm not enough, and I'm never chosen. Um, and those obviously compounded when I became a stepmom. Uh, being a mom myself, I honestly thought blending would be very easy. Um, especially with having all four boys, they're all like our two oldest are the same age and then our two youngest are the same age. So I thought it would be pretty easy because we'd both been through divorces and whatnot. I thought, I just thought it would be a very much smoother transition than it was. Um, so before I met Brittany, I would say that the biggest things I was struggling with in my home was that I very much felt unappreciated um, and very much felt unseen. There were weeks where his kids could be home and they wouldn't say a word to me for seven days. Um, and it was almost like the, the life operated around me and I was just a spectator of our home. Um, I felt like a roommate and not feeling like our house was my home. Jason was very good at referring to the house as our home from the get-go as soon as I moved in. Um, I could not refer to it as our home or my house uh, probably up until a couple years ago. And even now he'll catch me. correct me <laughs> so it's obviously still something that you know is still kind of there at times um I have a huge fear of abandonment um and that my fiance will leave that stems from my childhood my mom died when I was young um I have a horrific stepmom experience myself growing up and I left home at 16 um so there comes, you know, my dad not choosing me. So it starts very young. Um, and then I was in a very toxic relationship after my marriage for three years. So there's a huge abandonment feeling, which also comes with the feeling of not being chosen. And I think I see it as a theme with a lot of women in the group that um, we feel like our significant other chooses their children over us in many different situations and it can be very small things <laughs> to very big things um and I find that for me those are very much related uh because there are some issues with his one son that there's also a fear for me that he'll choose him over me um if push came to shove um 
I always kind of put everyone else ahead of me and I silenced my own voice and my own needs and feelings. I even put uh, Jason and his kids ahead of my own kids, probably for the first two or three years of the relationship, which I recognize now was my mistake um, because I left my kids feeling unprotected in some situations with his son. Um, like the another running theme, I think with most of you is there's resentment towards the ex-wife, um, disagreeing with specific parenting choices or lack thereof, um, her lack of respect mm. for boundaries when it comes to the relationship Jason's in now and the life he has now. Um, and then life with a stepchild who has mental illness and behavior issues, um, which in turn the family dynamic with that, um, there's been behaviors and actions towards my, one of my sons that has caused a lot of problems in the past and the effect that it has on like the whole family. So those were my, I think my biggest struggles. Um, and then I cross paths with Brittany kind of through social media, the podcast. Um, we connected, started messaging, and I kind of joined some of her initial programs. And then as the story was being developed, um, and when the option was put out to me to join the story, I was kind of like, well, this is a no brainer. Um, I very much need this. Um, <laughs> And like a lot of people as well, finances were a bit of a question, um, but I also knew it was kind of a necessity, like I need to do this inner work. So um, I think the work is worth it. So for those of you that are new to like the Uplifted program, um, it takes a lot of hard, deep work, I think, the step families aren't the cause of the problems. They just kind of reflect stuff that's there. Um, and one of the things I learned was identify. So how it's helped me, I guess, would be that identifying the roots and causes to all my insecurities, my fears, my triggers. So you can be triggered or hurt or caused pain by current situations that are completely valid. The ex-wife can hurt you. You know, your spouse can hurt you. The kids can hurt you in a present moment. But I find that that pain can be compounded by your past, uh, your thought processes. So the story has definitely helped me dig up and recognizing what those roots are and where the deeper level of why I'm being triggered and where it comes from. Um, the mindfulness is huge. <laughs> um learning how to recognize my overthinking um where you get trapped we all you'll learn about gina if you don't know about gina yet uh you you learn to recognize when gina starts to run in the, on the wheel in your head um and overthinking is a big thing overthinking about the present the past but also about what potentially could come um that hasn't even happened yet and while some of even those potentially could become a reality worrying about it before they've happened does nobody any good um and with that I've learned how to shift my perspective so when things happen now I can kind of try to put myself in Jason's shoes um where he might be coming from where his feelings might be coming from I try to put myself in his ex-wife's shoes when certain things happen um, all four of the kids um so the mindfulness and awareness I think is huge um and then with that also comes a shift back to self-love I think we all struggle with loving ourselves and finding our own worth um and until you heal old wounds from your past I think um and your past traumas you can't fully release the roots that you find. Um, I've also learned to recognize habits and thought process, thought processes and that they're all linked. So the story has very much shown me that what I'm learning and applying in the program 
isn't just for my step family. It's very much affecting career and work choices, finances, um, the way I parent my own kids, uh, my relationships with my family, like my dad and my sister, um, friendships. So it's very much an all encompassing program. I think people are so focused on just the stepmom aspect of it. And I have found that it's changing my life kind of in a more broad spectrum. And then the biggest part is not feeling alone. Um, the community in this group is a lifesaver. Um, Cause I think we, Gina brings us down the rabbit hole of where we spiral and we think no one understands. And this community has been amazing for that. So I think those would be the biggest things. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks so much for sharing all that. Um, yeah, you've come so far in, in two years. It's mm -hmm. really extraordinary to watch. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Sarah Gale, you're next up on my screen. If you want to open up and let us know a bit about your story, you know, what brought you into the stepmom story? What did you struggle with? Uh, what did you learn and what is life like for you now? Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah, the jealous stepmom. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so in the beginning of my um, journey, the biggest thing for me was jealousy. So Luke and I were together, my partner Luke, um, we were together for a year before I met the kids. And so before that, it was like me and him and all of his attention was on me. And we're in this like blissful bubble. And then I met the kids and it was like, ooh well, what the hell? Like, what about me? And so from there, like I just started spiraling down and down and it was getting worse and worse. Like I would throw these like stepmom tantrums and like pick fights for no reason, or it made me dislike the kids, didn't want them around, or I'd always find something else to do. Or if they were like throwing a tantrum of their own because they're little and little kids do that, I would in turn throw my own tantrum like, oh, you're getting attention? I'll get bigger attention. I'll get more attention. Like it was bad. So I was part of this like big Facebook group of stepmoms, you know, the toxic ones. And I was venting in one of them one day mm -hmm. and somebody had posted a link to Brittany's um, blog. And it like spoke to me. I was like, who is this woman? I need to know this woman. I need to talk to her. So I found your podcast, Brittany's podcast and started listening to all the podcasts and then eventually connected with Brittany. And she told me she was doing an uplifted challenge. So about a year ago, um, and I got in on it and it was crazy. The progress I made in just a week. So that's when I started to see like, okay, well, things can be better. And so I joined the story, um, which changed my life. I say this all the time and I'm sure it's getting old, but even if I wasn't a stepmom, the story would have changed my life. Like it changed everything about my life. Like it really, at the beginning, I'd say the first like two, three months of being in the story, mm -hmm. we worked through like my, my stepmom issues and my issues with the stepkids. Like Brittany gave me some resources to read. Now my stepdaughter and I are little besties and, and then we took like a deeper dive into everything else that's going on in my life. So like we were in like mountains of debt and now we're not. And I had all these stories about, especially about money, about, um, like women just don't make as much money as men and I'll just accept that. Um, so as a whole, it really did change my life, um, in every aspect. So I feel like my, my problems with the kids were so easily fixed once I figured out that these are like stories in my head. These are the facts. Look at the facts versus the stories. And this is how we're going to deal with it. And it really was simple because mm -hmm. in the story, like it's laid out for you, like every tool you need, every piece you need is there. And then along with that is just like the support. So Brittany's support and the support of our community. It's been really like 
transformative. Like I can't looking back at who I was like this angry, mean, drunk stepmom who wanted nothing to do with her kids to now we're planning a trip with the kids. Like I never in a million years could have imagined spending money on the kids. And now this is what our life has come to. Like, it's honestly peaceful. And, and then like my own self growth is insane. Like now I'm working towards becoming a stepmom coach of my own under Brittany and working towards like bigger goals. I never could have imagined even possible. It's like one minute it's in my head and then I convince myself it's impossible and then it's gone. And I've finally been able to get to a point where I'm past that and can see that anything you can think can happen. Like you're capable of absolutely anything. And had I not had my staff family, I never would be here right now. So really like my step family has been the biggest blessing that ever could have happened to me. And I never could have imagined myself saying that ever because the kids drove me nuts. Luke's attention to them mm-hmm. drove me nuts. Living in a house with them drove me absolutely nuts. And now it really is the, the greatest blessing that's ever happened to me. Thanks, Sarah. I feel like people are like, you're so full of shit when I say, you know, my step family is the biggest blessing that's ever happened in my life because you're right. You know, if you're not a stepmom, you don't like get to that such a low place. There's no reason to get any better. There's no reason to learn how to parent calmly and not yell at your kids and not spank your kids. If you're a bio parent, cause you're just allowed to do whatever, cause they're your kids, right? You don't have to, you don't have to refrain yourself and think about maybe doing things differently. You don't have to break patterns of generational trauma that have been passed along the line. Even like put sending your kids to their room or putting them in the corner, you know, stuff that we would think is like gentle parenting. If you are not a stepmom, you don't have to like think twice about that. You just do it. You don't have to think twice about being intentional with your marriage, right? You don't have to think twice about any of that because so many people in nuclear families just show Mm -hmm. up right? And do things the way that they've always been done. And that's one of the blessings I think about the story is that you really get to ask yourself the question, just because this is the way it's always been done, is it still the right way? And is it the right way for me and my family dynamic, right? Not the right way for Sally, not the right way for Lindsay, not the right way for Christy. Is it the right way for me, right? And that's why, you know, that's why I'm going to poo poo on some of those other groups for a minute that's why those other groups don't work is because it's all about giving advice and telling you how I think you should fix your problem but that doesn't work right that's not what the story is about it's helping you understand and recognize that you do know the answers you do have the strength you know everything you have all the tools you need inside of you it's just learning how to trust that and heal the stuff that's getting in your way so thanks Sarah so much for sharing um watchers viewers if you have any questions for Lindsay or Sarah so far just go ahead and type them in the chat and uh Christy you're next up on my screen so why don't you go ahead and share a little bit of your story you're the you're kind of the rookie of the group um the newbie we love having you you've come so far in such a short period of time it's been really amazing to watch so Um, same question for you, you know, what brought you to the uplifted challenge and then into the stepmom story? What were you really struggling with? What have you learned and what is life like for you now? Yeah. Okay. So my name is Christy and I live uh, also in Alberta in Canada. Um, I have only been working for, with Brittany for what, six months or something something like that since the last uplifted challenge. So not very long. Um, And basically, so to give you some backstory of kind of where I came from and how I found her, um, I have been with my boyfriend Ray for almost four years. Um, We, he has two kids, um, a son who is almost 14 and a daughter who is 11. I didn't meet them until we had been dating for six months. And from there, the the option was always given to them that, you know, I'll be here as much as you want me to be here. So if you want me here, I'll be here. And if you want to spend time with your dad, I'll go. Because I just felt like they had so much going on and they didn't get 
a choice in anything. So, you know, that was really a big thing to me. And they never wanted me to leave. <clears throat> uh, still to this day, if I am going to run an errand, they want to make sure I'm coming back. So I've been very, very blessed in the fact that, you know, my stepkids are really amazing kids. And, you know, Ray is very understanding. He was a step parent to five kids for seven years. So he at least kind of understands where I'm coming from. Um, but we went from having them every other week to there being um, some issues with um, drug abuse and actual abuse and a whole other slew of things. And so overnight, I literally became a full-time mom. And so I went from only have to thinking about myself to having to think about everybody else. And I went to the bottom of the list because that's how I am. And it got to the point where I was so overwhelmed. We were, you know, dealing with all of these court issues. Um, it came to a, a time when we actually couldn't afford to pay a lawyer anymore because it was that ridiculous. So um, I was our lawyer. I was the one who was sending emails back and forth and writing legal things up. And, you know, and it was so overwhelming. Um, it was insane. And, you know, the ex is not easy. She is high conflict. She, um, you know, is not very reasonable. And I have had, you know, real issues with her because no matter how many times I've told her, I'm not here to take your place. It doesn't seem like she understands that. And so it's been very frustrating. So anyways, um, we had them full time for a little under two years. And then slowly they worked back to being 50-50. And even that transition was very difficult. Um, and during that transition, um, I was at the point where I honestly thought that within days I could have ended up in the hospital. Like mental breakdown full on. Like I, I could not handle one more thing. Like if there was a piece of sand that came on top of me. I, I was done. That was it. Um, I was constantly begging for help. And I was miserable. I was not somebody that was fun to be around because I could not handle my own life. And I couldn't handle everybody else's issues and my issues. Um, you know, I have chronic illness. I have mental health issues. It's just a whole storm of things that kind of came to a head. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And that was very hard for me because I love Ray and I love his kids. Uh, but it just got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I can handle this, you know, for the rest of my life. Um, so I was just literally at the end of my rope. And, you know, I had followed other stepmom groups and they were kind of all, you know, woe is me and she's so terrible. And yeah, you kind of read them and go, yeah, I understand, but it doesn't make you feel any better. <laughs> and so I ended up somehow coming across um, Kristen Skiles or Styles from um, Step Momming. And she sent out an email and it said, um, if you're struggling, there is this girl named Brittany and she is putting on this three day um, workshop that is free and like you absolutely cannot turn this down and I thought okay what do I have to lose so um, I signed up and when I tell you that my entire life changed in a matter of an hour and a half That very first, sorry, the very first course of the Uplifted Challenge was like a total awakening for me. You know, I, I'd had people tell me all the time, like, oh, you need to practice mindfulness and you need to, 
work on yourself and you need to take time for yourself. And I always just thought like, to me, like, honestly, what I understood mindfulness to be was like doing five minute meditations and things like that. And I was like, I don't see how that's going to help me. And so it was taking that first course and having Brittany explain that like, it's not about doing things for five minutes a day. It's about practicing it constantly. That was a total like a total eye opener and everything just kind of clicked for me. And I was like, oh my God, like that actually makes so much sense. And so I was able to finally, you know, catch myself having these thoughts constantly and, and going to these places where I didn't want to be and being able to go, no, I'm not going to go there, you know, kind of coming back to like the present. And I mean, I never would have been able to do that before because I didn't understand what it was. I really didn't. So um, after doing the whole uplifted challenge, I knew that I had to be a part of the story. I, I just knew there was no if, ends, or buts. I had to figure out a way that I could do this because I needed the help. And so, you know, I looked at it and I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, I'm on a fixed income because I'm on disability. Like I have all of these other expenses. How, where am I going to find this money? Like, you know, that might be the thing that makes it so I can't do it. And so I went to Brittany and just said, hey, you know, like, I need to do this. Can we figure this out? Um, and she was amazing and was like, yeah, you know what, like, we'll sort it out. And we were able to work out, you know, a, a payment arrangement or whatever that was feasible for me. And um, honestly, in the six months that, that I've been doing this between the work in the story that, you know, like the other girls have said, really has little to do with being a stepmom and so much to do with working on yourself as a person and figuring out, you know, what makes you tick and what makes you, you know, go off the deep end and, you know, how to, how to come to a place where that doesn't happen and, and how to figure out, you know, how to control things and how to understand yourself better. It has been amazing. It's been totally transformative. Um, I love that Brittany is absolutely no bullshit. You know, she's not somebody that's going to let you go. Oh, boohoo, poor me. You know, I'm just going to sit here and uh, cry myself to sleep. Like, she's going to be like, no, you know, what are you going to do to change it? Because there's something you can always do. And I absolutely love that about her because I needed somebody and I still need somebody to, you know, kind of hold my feet to the fire and go, no, no, you're stronger than that figure it out. So, um, amazingly, you know, in six months, we've two days ago got, uh, Ray finally signed his divorce agreement, which I never thought was going to happen. <laughs> um, we're finally like actually looking at having our own child, which again, I was like, I don't think these things are ever going to come. You know, I really thought, my dreams were just going to have to take a backseat and that was the end of it. So it's been great. Um, you know, the ex has actually been reasonable and rational and that's been weird, <laughs> but fan like fantastic. And, you know, I'm just hoping that it stays that way and choosing to believe that this is the way it's going to be. Um, instead of constantly thinking, when is this going to end? And when is this going to go back to being terrible? And, um, you know, Brittany has said many times that things can be great and that, and then the ex-wife moves next door. Well, that's me. She literally moved a block away. Um, yeah, it's, she can see my house from her, from her bedroom. So, uh, let's hope it stays great, but, it's honestly changed everything. Um, 
And, you know, I, I tell Brittany all the time, I've told her many times that, you know, she has honestly changed my life. And I don't know where I would be without her and without, you know, all the rest of these amazing women who are so supportive and get it and have been through the, the you know, kind of similar things or are going through them. And so you actually feel like you're not alone. And, you know, she always says that I have to take responsibility for doing the hard work myself. And that's got to be the hardest thing that I've done. But, you know, I, I have done a lot of hard work and I'm very proud of that. And, you know, if any of you guys have taken, you know, are taking this challenge and feel like this might be right for you, I'm telling you, don't even think twice because you won't find a better group of people. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. That was so, that was so touching. We love, you've been such a great addition to our group. It's been so amazing. And I was thinking, like, I used the, that, like, hypothetical example of, you know, everything's <laughs> fine now, but what happens when the ex moves next door? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to manifest this for somebody eventually. Like, I have to stop <laughs> saying it. And then... <laughs> Uh, but the beautiful thing is that it happened now when you're in a place when this is happening, right? This, this is happening now in a place where you're like, I can deal with it, right? Like if this would have happened six months ago, I would imagine it would have been a little bit of a different reaction than like, right? It would have gone off the deep end. Away. Right. Most of us would though, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and now instead I'm able to be at a place where I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to choose to believe that it is possible that it's going to stay good. And if it doesn't, I'll figure it out when it happens, but I'm not going to sit here and constantly worry about when the other shoe is going to drop because maybe it won't. And that's something I could never have done before. So Amazing. yeah. Amazing work. We're so proud of you. So yeah, proud of well, you. Thanks. And yet <laughs> you do have to take the credit for doing the work because other than hold your feet to the fire. You're the one, I have done nothing. You're the one that's done all of it. All of you are the ones that have done everything. So I can't take credit for your work. I can't eat for you. You're doing it. So um, yeah, thanks everyone for your nice supportive comments in the Facebook group. Um, if you have any questions for Nikki, go ahead and type them below. We're going to get to questions as soon as our caboose and Green and Gatchel Green Street, our caboose is here to share her uh, wonderful story. Um, yeah, and take it away. All right, thanks everyone for your stories. It's also awesome to hear. Um, yes, so my name is Anne, and I live in Boulder, Colorado, in the United States. And um, I have been married to my husband for four years now, a little over four years. And so, and I will have been, I've been living with them for five years now, which is crazy. Um, <clears throat> so I, I actually, um, I started working with Brittany last year, like a year ago. Um, and I like found her through um, looking at like some resources, like from the stepmom magazine, um, website. Cause someone was like, I was like, I need a counselor. I need like someone, <laughs> um, like where can I find these people? And so someone in those forums was like, they have a list of people here. And so I started like reading through people. And like the moment I saw, went to like to Brittany's page, I was like, yes, yes, this is who I want to be. Like, this is, <laughs> it was just like, an, it was like, I got to like reach out to her. So, I reached out and um, like uplifted had been over. I don't know how, how quite how long yet, but um, I don't know, we, we talked and um, decided to have me join the story. Um, so that it was just, I was so, I was so ready to, you know, to make a change and like work on this. Like I was like at the point where I was like, I need to, I need to do something. Um, so it was like, by the time I found, uh, found her it's like it's no brainer so um but like leading up to that 
Um, I'd say like one of the biggest uh, areas of change for me was, you know, I was, so I was like not a, you know, coming into like a relationship with kids, you know, I hadn't been, um, I didn't babysit like when I was younger. I didn't, I felt like I feel, and it's, it's funny. Cause like with other random kids, I still have a little bit of this. Like, I feel like, I don't know what to say to you, like to children, <laughs> to, to kids. I just, I'm just not a natural, I don't think. Um, and so it was kind of like, I would just kind of like, um, you know, I'd be with the kids and they, they like would have, you know, they could have a good time, but I just felt like unnatural, you know? Um, and, um, and it was a little easier, like with my stepdaughter, she was like, like, as she went to in the middle school and stuff, like it was like, Oh, I remember this phase or like, Oh, I remember like this part of my life. So it was a little easier. It was just, and she's a lot like my husband. So it's like, we just, you know, it was a little easier to, um, to kind of navigate it, but I still had, you know, still had issues. I was trying to figure out how to behave in the right way for, um, but I was having like a harder time, um, connecting with my stepson or feeling good and natural with my stepson. Um, and my, my answer like to it was generally just like, okay, I'm just going to like avoid and avoid, (laughs) um, interaction and like continue to pull back and like keep, you know, bringing, bringing up like how or why this is difficult with my husband. Um, and so I would kind of let it build up and then we'd have like a discussion about it. And, um, it was, yeah, it was just not, it wasn't good. I was like, um, while, you know, while the kids were like, our you know, awesome kids. And like, they were nice to me. They were, they've always been sweet. Um, I just didn't know how to be. And so I hope that makes sense. Um, when I say that, but I just like, I felt like, okay, I'm not, I don't feel like settled and comfortable, like even when I'm at home and then, I mean that, and then it was sort of compounded. Um, and I told, told Brittany this, I think when I was started talking with her, but it was compounded by like also not feeling settled at work. And so I was, I was like, where do I go? Like, I don't know what to, do, what to do. So, um, yeah, like, just, and the pandemic, which now it's like, I don't know. I felt like the pandemic has been like this crucible to like, <laughs> kind of like make even make things a little even more intense, which I'm like, it's like, yeah, would it, would I have reached, you know, that critical point without the pandemic, I don't know, but, um, yeah, I'm really thankful for all the change that, uh, that I've, uh, undergone, um, during it, but, um, yeah, so it was, like, I just, I got a, I decided, like, I have to find some other f- source of support from someone who understands, like, these specific issues, um, because I did have, like, um, I had, like, this, my acupuncture testing, kind of, like, I would, talk with her sort of in a, like a therapy capacity. And that was very helpful. But like, again, it just was, it's just good to have like that stepmom perspective. So, um, so after joining like things, you know, I just, I dove in, like took, I took it very seriously. Um, and just like the changes have been so like amazing. And I say the same thing as Sarah, like, I feel like, I feel kind of like bad that I can't, I'm like, I want to recommend like that my other friends, you know, do the stepmom story, but I can't because they're not stepmoms. (laughs) So I'm like, I'm sorry that you're not stepmom, but um, yeah, it's just so amazing. And what was really cool was that so like, while I was like gaining all of these tools to see my life in this different way, it's like, um, Brittany would bring in like different specialists who, so a lot, it was like kind of this melding of like stuff specific to, you know, kids or like, you know, or a lot of specialists just had to do with yourself, but, um, just like the melding of the work of the mindfulness work with like those specialists, like allows you to hear it in a different way. Um, so, um, 
you know, as we went into like the spring, you know, my stepson was struggling because like making, <laughs> making those, like, a new, new middle schooler do school online is just, it's just mean. <laughs> so he, he was uh, having trouble in there. Um, and, and I ended up being for like a couple months there, like the go-to like helper for him. And I was able to approach that in just a completely in a giving way, not in I need to do this or else he's like, or all these consequences are going to happen. It was like from a place of like love and giving, um, which just a year, if you went back a year from then, like I looked at my like journal, <laughs> it just would never ever have been able to happen. I just would not have been able to operate in that way. And, uh, and it wasn't just schoolwork. It was like, I just started to have like connection points with him that um, were awesome. And like, I'm so happy about where our relationship is today. And, um, yeah. And just, I think a, a good way to, to summarize all that is like that, um, with all of these tools that we learn, um, it's like, you're not, I'm trying to make up a metaphor right now, but like, you're not being tossed in the middle of a wave. It's like, you're watching the waves, um, instead of just of being inside them kind of. And so it's like, and that, that applies to like all these, all life challenges. Cause new ones keep coming up just like Brittany, it's just like she was really was just saying like, with like, if someone, you know, the next life can move in next door. Um, there's always some new thing that's going to happen. And, uh, like, um, you know, transition to teen years, like transition to new schools, all of that stuff, um, stuff that could have sent me like tossing in waves, like freaking out about what we're going to do. Um, I'm able to like step back and uh, look at it from a different viewpoint. So super awesome. Thanks, awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Yeah. It's cool to watch how you've become his his tutor, hey, his most trusted tutor from running from the hills to becoming his most trusted tutor. That's kind of one of the places that I bonded with my, not kind of, that is one of the places that I started bonding with my stepson as well. I was kind of the same way. I loved kids, but I grew up with girls. I didn't know what to do with boys. My stepson and I just were not the same kind of people. It was a really hard bonding experience. Plus like Lindsay, um, my stepson has got some uh, diagnoses and special needs that, that make relationships a little more challenging to develop with him um, as it is. So that was kind of one of the, one of the ins for us in, in developing our relationship too was school tutoring, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, school's awesome. <laughs> school's awesome. Yeah. Good thing, good thing I loved school otherwise. I know, it yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So last call now, ladies, for for questions. Um, we do have one question that's coming so far for Sarah. And Sarah, that question is are there still some times when you get annoyed or irritated with your stepkids? You inspire me by being besties with your stepdaughter. That's from Nikki. We love you, Nikki. <laughs> we love you, Nikki. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. A thousand million percent. They annoy the shit out of me on a daily basis. But the difference is I don't throw a tantrum anymore. So I've been able to implement boundaries that work for me. So right now with the pandemic going on, I'm working from home. They're on summer holidays. They're constantly around, they're little, they make a lot of noises, I get irritated. So instead of like bursting at the seams, I just remove myself or like carve out time. I know they want my attention. So I'll like, some, sometimes I have to work myself up to it. Like, okay, yes, you're gonna do this at four o'clock from five o'clock, you're gonna play with them and you're gonna like it. And it works, you know? And then sometimes it's like, you do that and then you can have a bath yeah, you're going to take a bath after reward myself because they do drive me insane sometimes, but they're little and kids are annoying and that's normal. But I mean, my stepdaughter and I didn't always have this relationship. There was times where 
we were watching TV and I was sitting beside Luke on the couch and she would full on kick me until I'd get off the couch or slam doors in my faces. Like we were not always besties. It took a lot of work and a lot of compassion for me to get to this place with her. Um, I did a lot of reading on kids and like why they, their brains work the way they do, because I was just like, Brittany, they're so annoying. Why did she do this? Why is she so annoying? Just make her stop. How do I, where's the off button on this thing? So like understanding kids' brains and and how that works really helps me have the compassion I need um, to deal with it. Um, We had a speaker come in or Brittany had a speaker come in and she was like a, like a, I don't even know, like a child psychologist or something. And she gave us this metaphor And this has stuck with me and helped me through every, like with my stepson too, through every tantrum, every outburst, anything. And so she had like this cup, cup metaphor. So it was like a happy cup and a sad cup. And so you think of it through the day and it's like the kids are in school and oh, their best friend gave them a hug today and that fills up their happy cup. Oh, but someone stole the crayons. Like, you know, being like five and someone stole your favorite crayons. Like, oh, that's another drop in the sads cup. And then they come home from school and the cup's overflowing and you're dealing with this like massive outburst and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? But when you look at it from that perspective, like it just, it gives me so much compassion. Like poor little thing didn't get the yellow crayon. And then maybe, maybe someone stepped on her foot and her, and she fell down and, and now her sad cup is full and she just needs to let it all out. So coming to, to a place from compassion really helps me, but yes, they do very much annoy me to this day and they probably always will. And that's okay. And that's okay. Something I say to myself all the time is that like, I don't even like myself every day. So how is it possible to like expect me to like another human every second of every single day, right? Like sometimes I need a break from myself. (laughs) Okay. So it's just part of being a human, but yeah, that cups analogy was super helpful. Catherine, I'm going to bring her in again because she was amazing. Um, thank you, Sarah. That was great. We have an amazing question, not for anyone specifically from Julia. Um, So anyone who wants to take this, go ahead and and open up. I just got a call from Rory's day home lady. He's sick. So I have to go grab him soon-ish, as soon as we're done, if you're wondering what happened. Um, Julia wants to know, how did your partners see a difference in your behavior after you joined the stepmom story? Yeah, go ahead, Christy. Um, I can honestly tell you that there was a big shift and Ray actually said to me in one of our discussions when I was, you know, like, I can't do this and I need, I need your help. And, you know, like all this stuff, he actually said to me, um, that the biggest thing for him is that he needs me to not be negative um because that you know really affects him and brings him down and having him say that to me I was like oh I didn't realize how often that was probably happening and you know I've really made a conscious effort to change you know how I approach things but that wouldn't have been possible without all of the work I've done on myself and you know things are way better and and he definitely noticed the difference. My mom, who I'm super close to is, you know, said it's like day and night, like literally everybody around me has, has noticed that there is, has been a huge difference and they noticed it that within an hour and a half, like, honestly, it was that, it was that fast. So yeah, it definitely, um, it makes a big difference. Thanks for yeah, the oh. I was I muted myself. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, well, Christy, that my husband has said a similar, like a very similar thing. Like when I I've 
I had asked him in the past, like, well, like if he was having a hard time, like, well, how can I help you? And a lot of times his response, maybe every time, I don't know, like it is like, you can help me by not freaking out all, you know, like not just like, <laughs> like being happy yourself. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I think, I think the most telling thing for, for um, that I've heard him say is uh, just like since at different points, like after um, starting the story, um, like probably in the spring around like helping with school, um, he'll just say things like, who would have thought like you were so worried back <laughs> back when this started and look at you now, you're just the best stepmom ever. And, and it's like, look at all the stuff you're, do you're doing. And um, so I don't, yeah. So, and so much of the work is like this internal thing that, you know, I don't, like, I don't know how much he knows that like that it all is coming from like all this internal work or, not, or anything, but yeah, I think that's like the most telling, telling comment. Mm -hmm. I want to contribute really quickly. Um, for me, like, because if the kids were having a tantrum, then now I'm having a tantrum and I'm all mad. So he's like dealing with them and dealing with me and like jumping all over the place. And now since now I've been a year in, in the story and now I come in as a place of like support. So instead of throwing my tantrum in the background, I'm there like as his partner, not working against him anymore. And that's completely shifted our relationship because it was like constant, like fighting, bickering, this, that I'm never happy. He could never make me happy. No matter what he did, he could never do anything right. He's always putting out my fires. And now I'm just like content. I'm fine. They're throwing a tantrum. I got his back. I'm standing there behind him, supporting him as another like parental figure or like talking him down. Cause he, now he's escalated cause they're freaking out. And I'm like, it's okay. Just chill out. And he's like, who are you? So <laughs> the shift is huge. And like Christy said, like you do see the shift like pretty quickly, like, pretty freaking quickly. Like it happens fast as you work through the story and get through the chapters and work through your shit, like new person. I was shocked. Honestly, I went from being like honest to God, a 10 out of 10 when it came to anxiety every day, which has never been an issue for me to like feeling like I had this huge weight lifted like that. Crazy. Yeah. And I mean, have to fast. Yeah. And even now, like, I noticed that what Ray and I used to only talk about, you know, stuff with the ex and it was constantly dealing with all of this crap. And now we're finally back to being able to like, you know, have our own relationship and talk about stuff that has nothing to do with her and, you know, just enjoy each other's company again. Cause that was hard for a while. So. I'll say too, um, I saw somebody comment and I'm, trying to remember if it was in this uplifted program or if it was something before where someone asked if they should tell their spouse they were going to do this um I am wholeheartedly think that there should be transparency and I do think that your spouse should know I know in the beginning for me I had a little bit of anxiety around oh my god do I tell Jason I'm talking to Brittany that I'm doing these programs or I want to do the story because I almost felt that there might be judgment um that oh what you know what does Lindsay think are problems that she's not telling me or you know it, thinking there's something going on that wasn't going on or um there was an underlying layer of judgment and that I was putting on it that I feared what he would put on it and there wasn't I was very like, I need to, like, I want to do this. This is who Brittany is. And it's, you know, it's for me is how I very much made it out to be. This is for me and to work through my own stuff. Um, he's been very supportive. Um, and I think it's definitely like Anne was saying, because there's so much work you do on a personal level, I think your partner can't help but see the changes. Um, 
And I know for me, communication has been, which I thought we had great communication before. Now we're at a whole different level. And I feel it's because I can approach tough conversations now with a little more control and a little more clarity and a little more with my own boundaries, um, feeling safe to express my thoughts and opinions, um, which has made some of the difficult conversations that we've had to have a lot easier to get through, a lot less emotional. Um, and I think you, I think your partner also notices the shift. Um, and in my own experience, he has started doing some of his own work in the last year, um, which I never asked him to do. Um, I just think when you see people shifting in a positive way you can't help but be like how can I work on my own stuff um, because each person you can't fix anybody we can't fix our stepkids quote unquote fix we can't fix what we deem needs to be fixed in our spouses we need to just fix ourselves or improve ourselves and that's the same for them and I think that was a big thing that I think you just rub off if that makes sense right where and then you end up growing together. So, yeah. I love that you said that because when I, when I really got like gung ho into like this kind of work and things started changing for me super quickly, um, I got to this point where I felt like I was like outgrowing Seamus and I was like, I'm not going to be able to be in a relationship with somebody who thinks like this. Right. It was like scary because I had, she was shedding all of these layers and all this, the person that I was when, when we met, right. The person he was attracted to and the, the thought processes that got me attracted to him. So I was like really afraid. And I think that this is something that people don't talk about is like, when we start evolving, like we do end up shedding relationships sometimes, but Seamus said he, he's like super into all of this stuff now because, and I didn't tell him to do it. Right. I wasn't like, you've got to get into personal development. You've got to get into spirituality. You've got to practice mindfulness. I didn't say any of that to him, but he started doing it, figuring out what it was interesting to him, exploring his own paths, creating his own mindfulness practice essentially because, and he said to me, he was like, the writing was on the wall. Right. Because if you were going to keep going on this upward trajectory and I was just stuck in this like miserable place, like I knew that we weren't going to make it. So it was kind of his like motivation to see. And like things were like my life was like so good. I was so happy. Like I was I was wicked. Right. And he was like this weight. So he said, yeah, the writing was on the wall. And he I think of, I, th I think Sarah, too, you said that your partner like joined a group for, for men too. Right. They like see the change in us and they're like, I want some of that. Right. I want to drink the Kool-Aid. I want, I went in on that because it's not something that you can make somebody do, but it's inspiring to watch. Right. It's it is. And I, I think that um, we get caught up, like you said, because of that fear where it's almost like, Oh my God, I need you to start doing this too. I need you to start recognizing this because we can see, it's very easy to see other people's triggers and traumas, even when they don't see it. Um, so it's very easy to get caught up in the, oh my God, you need to start doing this too. And a statement was made to me, I think even like six months ago now, that has stuck with me where it's like, I need to focus on my own work and trust that Jason's going to do the work he needs to do, but that's not my responsibility I have to trust him in that mm -hmm. and I really quickly want to put, like say something about what you said about how it's like super easy to identify other people's triggers right <laughs> but when it comes to our own when huh? it comes to identifying our own triggers we're like we're so close to it Right. And so I think that that's another mistake people think when they like they go through the uplifted challenge and they're like, OK, I've got a lot of information now. I know what to do. And they go off on their own and they don't <laughs> know what to do. Right. Because you need that extra layer of like the community or me holding your feet to the fire to be like, OK, this is what's happening. You're too close to it. This has been a pattern in your life for decades. 
right? It's not your fault that you can't see it. We can see it. We're here to help you. We're here to support you. There's a big piece of this work that can be done on your own, but there's a lot of this work that does need that like other layer of support. And yeah. Um, okay. Last question that we've got here from Tiffany. And again, whoever wants to take it, go ahead. Tiffany asks, I love how y'all talk about it the stepmom story changing your life in more ways than just in your step families. Have any of you seen other relationships in your life drastically improve just due to the techniques you've learned to apply? Chrissy, you were kind of starting to talk about that with your mom, but go ahead. I can. Can I go first? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. Um, in positive well, I guess it's all positive in the end. I want to say positive and negative. Um, there are relationships in my life that because of the tools I've learned and especially boundary setting and um, yeah, my sister and I are probably in the best place we've ever been since I left home at 16. Um, sorry, that's going to get me emotional. And it's taken a lot of work to get there. Um, and it's still a work in progress, but we are in the best place. I've seen her more in the last year than I probably have in the last decade. Um, that being said, my relationship with my dad, with the tools I've been learning, I'm learning that it is what it is. And I can't hold any expectations on my dad and the relationship I wish it was and I want it to be. Um, which in turn means that my relationship with him is distant um, because I can't change him. So again, the whole you can't change people or make people see what they need to work on. I can't do that for my dad. That's up to him. And unless he's going to do that, I need to set the boundary around what my relationship can be with him because of that. Um, I've also seen in the last two years, friendships deepen to very new levels with certain people um, and I've also lost a couple very dear friends um, one I'm still struggling actually to let go with was a woman I thought was one of my best friends for the last eight years um, something happened last summer I expressed my emotion and boundaries and I haven't heard from her in over a year so it's you do, you definitely see the impact um, in all relationships, so, yeah. The thing too is, I mean, I know people always say, you know, people are in your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime, and that's very true, but it's amplified when you're doing work on yourself because you'll find either people, you know, wanna support you and, want to you know be around and and make themselves better so that you know while they see you making yourself better or they're like no no I liked when you were broken you know and now that you're not broken like I am well you know forget you and it's hard you know especially if you've been friends with them for a long time it's very hard to to kind of let that go but there definitely comes time comes a time where you're like you know, hopefully one day you will understand and you'll do your own work and maybe you'll, you know, you'll kind of reconnect. But unfortunately, yeah, you can't make other people change and you can't let them stifle you either. So it's hard. But yeah, I mean, I definitely, even with my mom and my aunt, like my, mo my mom has some mental illness issues too. And she she ruminates like nobody else like Gina is like her wheels on fire <laughs> like all the time and it's been funny because there's been so many times where I'm like okay well you know she can't do this because she's not a stepmom however <laughs> you know I can try and at least give her some of the tools I've learned to try to help her to you know feel better and to to be able to deal with these things and um, that's made a big difference too, for both, you know, her and my aunt are like, what are you doing? You know, like, can I do this? Like, can you, can you tell me what you're doing? <laughs> and, you know, 
so it's been good like it's nice to see when when you're doing well and then other people around you are like you know I don't know what you're doing but like help me <laughs> so yeah for me relationship wise um I find that I take I'm really sensitive so if somebody is going to come and like with any kind of like judgment towards me and my decisions I'm like why would they say that about me like I'm doing my best it's so mean so I brought this forward it, it was my older sister like we sometimes have a tough relationship and I brought it to Brittany I'm like why is she so mean to me and one of the biggest things that she really helped me realize was was if you held a mirror up in front of you while this person is like passing judgment on you or anything like that, it's a reflection of something going on in their life and it's nothing to do with you. So it's something I use now as a tool where it's almost like a, like a guard for me, like or a block. So I'll like someone's saying something I don't like that's clearly nothing to do with me, has to do with them. I'll like imagine this mirror in front of me. That's your shit. You can say whatever you want to me. I'm not going to take it personally because it's yours and I'm giving it back to you by imagining this mirror in front of me. So it helps. What was that thing that like you'd say in elementary school or middle school? Like I'm rubber, you're glue. Yeah. That <laughs> thing you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. Sticks to you, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. It's totally like that. Yeah. And like once you figure that out and understand it and accept it, it's like, okay, nothing you can say is going to hurt me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So good. Thank you. And do you have anything to add? Uh, I think everyone's kind of, you know, said that. Like it, I, I re- resonated with so many of the different things like you you're growing and you see and so some folks you know are going to grow along with you and uh, um, or grow, do their own growth and um, and some are not and um, yeah it's uh, it's 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 great I mean it's like for me it's helped like the effects have helped in just like non-step family areas of my life like my my career and so and things like that like um it just extends <laughs> to um you know me believing a lot a lot more as possible and um and believing in myself and so I know that's not like some us another person noticing but um yeah that's the that's the effect there but it's a big change big transition yeah, big change big change well ladies thank you so much viewers big round virtual energetic round of applause for our amazing panelists who are so generous with their time today um they all volunteered their time so uh, everyone show your appreciation say thank you uh in the group tag them and thank them if you guys want to be tagged, I just volunteered you to be dead hundreds <laughs> of comments tagged on Facebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe just a well, just a virtual thank you is good. Um, and yeah, I hope that that was uh, helpful for everyone. It's like amazing for me to watch you all grow and change and evolve. And I have the best job in the world and I couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much for being here watchers thank you for watching um you're all amazing watchers and even you guys our last workshop is tomorrow so i'll see you tomorrow afternoon for our third and final workshop and uh yeah that's all for now bye bye folks have a good day